where, hey, I'm, I'm human. All right? I might got a little recency <laughs> bias in me. I spend time thinking about things. I change my mind. I overthink. We all do it. I've been known to do it at a little bit of a higher clip than the average, but it's okay. We figure it I out. I am human. I am human. dialed in man that was great to watch that was great to watch definitely the post game, best post game pot of the year i think oh yeah i'm a little salty the boys didn't have the palinas to call the upset right away i know i wish i wish we did that i wish we did that respect our, our boston insider made that pick right away on his bracket but <clears throat> yeah that was not a not how i envisioned that one going but man no. did it feel good Man, did it feel nope. good. And who who told you that, one, the boy Jordan Love could ball, and, two, to watch out for the Packers this season? I'm going to take a little victory lap on that. I'm just going to take All a little right. victory. Take your lap. Take your lap. Take a little victory lap. Anyways, more on that later. Uh, Pop, you want to give a little shout-out to the Turfs, to the alma mater. Yeah, it was great road victory. They, You know, they, they won a nice game against Michigan at home after a horrible yep. first half. Played a great second half. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll break down the Terps game, but a nice 76-67 win over number 10 Illinois on the road. So Terps are, are trending up, which is good to see. It was a little bit of a rough start to the season. Definitely, yeah. They needed a, needed a bit of a turnaround, and it looks like they're doing it. Hey, I mean, I pulled up to the to the game over – a little winter vacation, and all of a sudden that boy's kind of putting things together. I, I got that go. one at Good half time. Trying. I told him a couple of adjustments to make, you know, the whole thing. But uh, anyways, big news for the commanders this week. You guys definitely already know it at this point, but Adam Peters has been hired as general manager. We were kind of alluding to that happening in the last podcast, saying he was the number one seed, but we didn't quite know what was going to happen. And then I think like a day after the podcast came out, that got announced. So. We met up. We made the call. Wasn't ready for the emergency pod quite yet. Not that much to talk about in regards to that other than, holy crap, we got our guy. How awesome is that, Bob? It's great. I mean, to get the, you know, the consensus number one pick when it comes to general manager candidates out there. Um, yeah. You know, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, obviously, by all accounts, got a great, you know, great background, came up through scouting. You know, it was with the Patriots and what is it, the uh, – um, it was with the Pats as well as the uh, – Broncos at some point. Broncos. Um, God, I, was, I, yeah. I had a, a blank spot moment there. But, yeah, Broncos. Patriots had Super Bowls with the Patriots, then the Broncos, Super Bowls with the Broncos, and then the 49ers where haven't gotten a Super Bowl quite yet, but they've been perennial contenders yeah, the during yeah. his time there. And you look at the roster he's put together and the guys – that he's drafted um, and something that I, I want to touch on. And I know it's, it's been touched on a bit. Everybody who wants to be negative is going to bring up the Trey Lance trade. Right. And I got two, I got two takes on that one. Nobody hits all the time. You're not going to be perfect. There's no way to be perfect. There's no way to guarantee it, but being aggressive and attacking a guy that you think can change the franchise, in my opinion, is a positive thing. And two, look at how he and John Lynch, obviously John Lynch is in the driver's seat over there, right? But he's working with them. Look at how he's been able to keep the team afloat amidst losing three first-round draft picks and having a complete bust in your third overall pick in the NFL draft at quarterback. A lot of teams, we watched our team collapse because of that. A lot of teams completely collapse after something like that and instead – They go get Brock Purdy with the last pick in the draft. They keep it rolling, and they surround him with talent. All day two, day three guys, I mean Elijah Mitchell, day two, day three guy, George Kittle, deep round guy. Brandon Ayuk, deep round guy, makes the trade for Trent Williams, brings him in, makes the trade for Chase Young, brings him in. Um, Not sure where Bosa went in the draft, but, I mean – all these what about, guys. Who's, who's the linebacker that's the real, the real stud there that they got in like the Fred third Warner. round? 
Yeah. Was it Warner that was in the third round or Greenlaw? I think, both I think are it was studs. Warner, yeah. Um, yeah. Both are studs. But, yeah, just – I mean, it's hard to hit as much as the 49ers have hit. And it's like – it seems like every offseason you hear the McCaffrey trade. Look at what the McCaffrey trade did for that team and how it right. changed that offense. And I think that's been a good thing. They've, they've got a nice blend of being aggressive and free agency, right? But yeah. also, you know, like you mentioned, maybe maybe not always hitting on that first pick or they've traded a lot of first picks away, but they've been able to hit deeper into the draft. And that's, you know, that's impressive. And, hey, look, you know, you're never going to know what the results are going to be. Unfortunately, you know, we're sitting here on January 14th doing this pod. It'll come out tomorrow morning. You know, we don't know. It's a long way off yep. before the season kicks off, and it's probably a two, three year process to kind of fully rebuild this team. But all you can do is get who the consensus best uh, person is out there. And, and what's yep. phenomenal is that this has become a destination for that type of, you know, talent. So if you're able to land the top GM candidate, if you're able to land the top coaching candidate, which we'll see, um, you know, what are players going to think? Is this a place they want to be? So it's yeah. really crazy how things are turning around with with the Harris group and uh, um, Dom and Pop still waiting on our invita- invite to Miami. But, you know, we're here. We're ready. Bags are packed. We're working on it. Yeah. Um, I just want to clarify, when we go to Miami and we play 2v2 basketball, I get Magic Johnson on my team, right? You're going to play with Harris? No. Just, to, no. Clar- just to clarify, <laughs> I get Magic. I'm just going to set screens. Uh <laughs> But, yeah, so it's just – it's awesome to see there. Great point by Pop in terms of getting players in the building. Um, what are guys going to think and that want to be a part of the team? And I, th- I think it's super, super exciting just to see see what's going on here. And we have unlimited assets, it almost feels like, to work with. I mean, it's like you're jumping into an, almost an expansion team in terms of the amount of salary cap and draft capital that we have, where we're picking in the draft. So Peters has the opportunity, all those names that I just raffled off, there will be more of those guys in the coming years that will be held at that level of pedigree, and Peters has the opportunity to go and get them. So that's really exciting. And when you see what's happened in Houston um, and even in Green Bay, I mean, Green Bay is a team that was in turmoil after Rodgers left and you thought maybe had three wins, and a lot of guys are able to turn it around faster. So not sure we're stuck. With a four, five, three-year rebuild situation, we might be able to turn things around a little bit faster, but we'll see. It's exciting. Yeah, I think that I think the tricky yeah. part is is you know having a young quarterback is always a challenge in terms of just you know not you know yeah CJ yep. Stroud did it, um, but it's it's kind of rare, so it, it it can create some challenges, but we'll see. We don't know who that quarterback's going to be yet. I think an interesting little tidbit maybe before we move on from the GM thing is. That we haven't heard an official announcement on this yet. So even though it's locked and loaded and there haven't been any denials, we haven't seen that that press release with the W on it just yet, making this official. And it's also interesting that, um, and I'm sure that's just a formality, um, and it's also interesting that it's a, it, it's the GM job, not the head of football operations. So, um from from all accounts, we'll see. Again, no official, yeah. you know, announcement yet. So maybe maybe well, it does end up being that. But I don't think he's officially allowed to be announced as the general manager. My guess would be until uh, the 49ers are eliminated. Um, so that will take at least another couple of weeks because at that point his contract that true? will be up at the end of the season. That would be my guess. I don't know. I didn't even know it wasn't officially announced yet. But I do know it's happening, and. I'm not too worried about that. That could be why. That's a that's a reasonable explanation. That that sounds like a technicality at that point. Um, but let's get into these uh, these head coaching candidates. What do you say, Pop? Let's do it. Let's do it. So it's looking like Ben Johnson. Wonder where you guys heard that name first. <laughs> Wonder where you guys heard that name. That is a name that has been tossed around for years. This is a guy that had he become had he went into the head coaching carousel last year he would have been the top candidate 
He stayed for a year. He improved the offense. He improved the team. And now he's in the head coaching carousel again this year. And he's the top candidate. And it's looking like the commanders are the favorite to land him. You heard from uh, Diana Rossini say that we seem to be the favorite landing spot. Um, Vegas mentioned thinks Carolina. So. Vegas thinks so. Um, mentioned Carolina as the other option. Um, and I, I tweeted out, how great does it feel to look at a head coaching candidate like Ben Johnson and say, no way he'll go there with that ownership situation. And it's not about us. It's not Pretty about amazing. us. No, no disrespect to the Panthers fans, but it's just nice to be on the other side of that uh, for once. Um, so, yeah, you know, Ben Johnson is obviously the top one. Pop, are these betonline.ag odds? Where are these odds coming from, just so the people – People know that I'm know. reading off from the It's an article. article. It was All like right. a Hogs Haven article or something like that. There know. we go. My guess would be this is I'm going to guess betonline.ag. That would be my guess. Maybe Pop can do a is little, it that uh, important? little check. Well, I got I got something to say if it is. This would pop, maybe Pop can do a little check here. But Ben Johnson at minus 140 is the leading candidate there. Then you got Bill Belichick next up at plus 450, nine for two. That's not happening. That's a money grab. Don't put your money on that. Um, it's been pretty much confirmed that the team has no interest in him under any circumstance, which I'm glad for. Bobby Slowick, five for one. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, six to one. Mike McDonald, nine to one. Eric Bieniemy, twelve to one. Raheem Morris, twelve to one. Mike Vrabel, fourteen to one. Dan Quinn, twenty-two to one. Aaron Glenn, twenty-five to one. Pop, who's your favorite candidate off that list? Yeah, I mean, I think we broke down our favorites, you know, last time. I think, we had, yeah. you know, I had um, Ben Johnson. Well, who do you think's the most likely then, maybe? Bobby Slowick and Mike McDonald is my top three, and then maybe throwing yeah. Jim Harbaugh in there as a, an option. I think, you know, I think Bilicek, you know, th- I stole this from JP, which we often do. Um, he said that he's probably he, – it, it's probably just Vegas trying to get some done money bets – on there, yep. you know, by all accounts, there's no, no chance of Belichick coming here. Maybe he's on a on a on a jet plane to Dallas um, tonight, uh, interviewing for that job. Who knows? But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I hope think. He is. I mean, obviously, slow. You know, at the time of the recording of this pod, we don't know the results of the uh, um, Detroit uh, Rams game. We're doing this just after the Dallas game. So, but Slovak certainly, you know, that was a hell of a performance by the Texan. His stock seems to be rising. I think if it was either one of those two guys, Johnson or Slovak, I'd probably be pretty happy. Um, I think, you know, but it seems like all signs are pointing to Ben Johnson. And, yeah. You know, everything we hear about him, you know, I've, I've, there's been a lot of good local coverage um, where people are interviewing people from the t- Detroit area about him and nothing but just, very, very high marks. So Ben Johnson's the obvious favorite for me. Yeah, former quarterback, right? Yep, Carolina. Yeah, always helps. So you're looking at quarterback development, former quarterback. Um, um, that's always a positive. I think for me, Bobby Slowick is probably my number one seed at this point. The more I think about it, I mean, Ben Johnson was Ben Johnson was a hot name that we tossed around for a long time. And don't get me wrong, I'm doing cartwheels if we get Ben Johnson. But it's just – it's a tingle. I got a tingle about Bobby Slowick. I think what he's working with out in Houston is a little bit less, not by much, but is a little bit less than what Ben Johnson has to work with. Um, I think the development of C.J. Stroud and I think the way – watching that um, watching that Houston-Cleveland game, and sure, this is a bit of recency bias, but um, you also look at the pedigree and the tree that he came from. He came up under Kyle Shanahan – he worked for Shanahan in D.C. and then on the defensive side of the ball, and then he ended up working for Shanahan as an assistant out in San Francisco on the offensive side of the ball. So clearly Shanahan saw something in him, liked him, and then he ends up back in uh, Houston, and this is his first year there, and you see what's going on over there. So if that doesn't get you excited about a candidate, I don't know what does. Um, but – the thing that I wanted to say is he makes it so damn easy for C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud is a ball player. But C.J. Stroud right. is throwing to wide open men. 
and he's throwing to wide open men with seven guys blocking for him. The way Slowick is able to mix max protection with the deep shot and get the guy open, to me, is that to me is hints of like the Mike McDaniel type of like this is kind of revolutionary and not the way the game is really being played on right. a, on a wide scale right now. And that's what I'm looking for in a head coach, and especially in somebody that's going to get a young quarterback. He obviously has the experience of doing it with Stroud. Um, and I think if he was to come do it with us, I think we'd see some pretty positive results. And this this is emotional, so this should not have a play in the choice of why we pick him as head coach. But what a just poetic ending to the Snyder era and what a poetic start to – the uh, the Josh Harris, Magic Johnson era to bring back one of those coaches from that 2013 coaching staff graphic to make it right and for him to come be an absolute stud and win Super Bowls for us. How awesome would that be? That would just be such yeah, a cool story. It, 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 it's, like I said, it's that's awesome, emotional. But, you know, it's also, um, if you hear, you know, who are you else are you hearing interested in Slowick, right? Um, I think that the buzz on him, maybe around the league, maybe it's it's grown after the weekend, isn't anywhere near as high as it is on Johnson. So, yeah, it's kind of a cool no, little no. connection there with that graphic. But, you know, I think we need to make sure we don't just get caught up in that. Um, you know, wasn't a ton of buzz Benny, on let's Kevin O'Connell either. Does, let's see how Benny does tonight. Um, but uh, – I think Ben Johnson is is the guy if you can land him. I'd be I'd be stoked with either. More I'd be proven. super stoked with either. I know I just went on a whole yeah. soliloquy about uh Bobby Slowick, but I think it's I, I'd be super happy with either. You guys have heard me sing the Bible of Ben Johnson for uh for months on this thing. So I know but you're like zagging now. Head you're head zagging. Head. I'd be all over it. I'd be all over it. Hey, I'm I'm human. All right, I might got a little recency <laughs> bias in me. I spend time thinking about things. I change my mind. I overthink. We all do it. I've been known to do it in a little bit of a higher clip than the average, but it's okay. We figure it I out. I am human. I am human. A uh, bit of an inside into, joke there. We'll keep moving yeah, on. Yeah, if you get it, you get it. <laughs> it's a long I story. <laughs> yeah, not for, not for today's podcast. And for that gentleman's <laughs> sake, maybe just not for the podcast. <laughs> Let's get into uh, the wild card weekend reactions. What do you think, Pop? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, uh, <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so, <laughs> Browns lose to the Texans 45 to 14. Chiefs spank the Dolphins 26 to 7. And Packers absolutely run over the Cowboys 48 to 32. Just. Give me your summary of the weekend, Pop. Give me your takeaways. What games did you enjoy? How you feeling? Run it down for the people. Yeah, I mean, I guess I think we both picked the Browns. I know I picked the Browns. You picked the Browns yeah, too. Yeah, I picked I the think. Browns as well. Yeah, so it's another emotional. You know, definitely thing. didn't expect that result, but it seems like you know Texas defense really shut down the Browns. I'm su- really surprised to see the Browns defense give up forty five points. Yeah. So yeah, super impressive performance there I think you know I'd sum the Chiefs game up is obviously you know Dolphins playing in that brutal cold is not a great max but Pat was being Pat and that Chiefs defense is for real yeah so yeah. you know they're 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 not done yet um and you know I, I think that that the result is 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 what it is and like I said Pat Mahomes although his statistics weren't incredible watching the game at least the eye test he just seemed like you know, top Pat Mahomes type performance. He yeah. was doing it with his legs. He was making the clutch throws when we needed him. They needed him. And then, um, yeah, how about, how about those Packers just spanking the Cowboys? Cowboys got some points in garbage time. Packers were up 32 at one point. So final score of 48-32 Packers over Cowboys. And, yeah, unfortunately, Dom and Pop were not willing to put the Polinas on the line. And go with the Packers, but uh, so not looking great so far for the Bada weekend or the brackets. Um, we've got a couple of other yeah. participants in the bracket challenge that we'll we'll talk about probably more on uh, this week's pod, but because uh, we'll have all the results of all the games. But some great performances. Why don't you get into some of these top top performers from the games, and maybe we'll go ahead and. 
pick a sauce award for, you know, for the t- first three games of, uh, uh, you know, who we think was the most standout performer. These guys not going to be easy. But let's see it's not going to be easy. There's two no. front runners in my opinion, but I, I agree. it's not going to be easy. It's Stroud um, and Love, right? Yeah, it's got to be. As the front runners. I mean, yeah. Rasheed yeah. Rice may be, may be a close third, um, but I think Stroud and Love gap Rasheed Rice next. Um, but, yeah, C.J. Stroud. Aaron Jones had a hell of a game, Aaron too. Jones played real well, too. Um, C.J. Stroud, three touchdown passes, 157.2 rating. Uh, Singletary, 13 catches for 66 yards and a touchdown. Both guys that were not in Houston last year, by the way. Singletary was a free agent. So back to that rebuilding doesn't need to take 25 years conversation. Uh, Pat Mahomes, 303 yards total, uh, combined passing and rushing. Um, One touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco, 24 for 98 and a touchdown. Rasheed Rice, eight receptions for 130 and a touchdown. Jordan Love, 16 for 21, 272 yards. Three touchdowns, 157.2 rating. Aaron Jones, 21 for 118 and three touchdowns. What a weekend. I mean, none of these games were close. Frankly, none of these games were that. Browns-Texans was a lot of fun at the beginning, and then the Texans pulled away, and it kind of turned into got boring quick. Um, right. Packers-Cowboys is just a blast to watch the uh, – the Cowboys get beat up on, so that was probably the most fun I had out of all the games. And uh, Dolphins, Chiefs, you know, the Chiefs just – they're just the better team, just as what it is. Yeah. And the cold weather. The cold weather, that situation is just not good for Miami. Obviously, Tua looked pretty bad. I'll call it what it is. Tua looked bad. Um, first real big bright lights game for him because he was hurt lot for the playoffs last year. Um and yeah, not a not a great showing on his part. Tyreek is Tyreek, of course. Um, and yeah, Rasheed Rice showed up for the for the Chiefs to kind of get their offense rolling because Lord knows Travis Kelsey ain't doing nothing this season, and that doesn't matter if it's the playoffs or the regular season. Weak right? legs. He's got weak me legs, Tra- son. Me and Travis got beef. I wouldn't <laughs> say it to his face, but me and Travis got beef, man. <laughs> I've not had it with Travis Kelsey, uh, but. Uh, yeah, and he stole our whole gig. He started a family podcast after Dava Pop got going, man. I got I me and Travis Kelsey gotta have a conversation. <laughs> gotta have a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll play it, I'll play it. But yeah, for me, I mean, I, I would give this also word to uh to Jordan Love. And that's probably surprising you. You know I'm a big Stroud fan, but you expected Stroud to do what Stroud did. And Love is a guy that has been slowly putting it together all year, but just you saw it all click today, and just absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna out. give the award to the the guy that spanked the Cowboys. There's no question that about too. it. That too. There's a little I'd bit say of bias that it's there as well. A little bit of bias there, but uh, great performances by the two of them. Almost a flip of a hundred percent. They ended up with think. the exact same quarterback rating, which was near perfect. I think Lord Love was perfect until. The one incompletion he threw at the very end there. So, yeah, which was dropped. Um, impressive. <laughs> right I mean, the hands. Uh, and Matt LaFleur is a heck of a coach and uh, part of that tree you talked about. So, um, yeah, we didn't mention that the, the Steelers' bills got postponed till tomorrow. So we would have had one additional game to cover, but that one got postponed tomorrow. Crazy situation in Buffalo. So it looks like – Unless the Steelers pull the upset over the Bills, it would be the Texans playing the Ravens next week. So, and then the Chiefs would, would potentially get the Bills. But if that doesn't happen, if the Steelers win, then that flip flops um, in terms of who's playing who. Um, and yeah, I guess the I guess the Packers are going to the 49ers. They're the they're the seventh seed, so that's that's locked in. Packers 49ers. Yep. That'll be a tough. that be a tough. Uh, assignment going across the country there and getting that one, but you never know. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Is right. Um, that'll be, those will be some fun matchups next week for sure. Um, man, tough situation with that Steelers bills game and that, uh, that weather, but you hope now we just need Baker. We had Jordan love do it. Now we just need Baker Mayfield to knock out those damn Eagles and we can enjoy the playoffs. <laughs> We can just enjoy the playoffs. 
right? That's all we need. So, uh, yeah, but Rams Lions is going to be a lot of fun. It's actually going on right now. So we're going to probably wrap it up pretty soon so we can get in uh, uh, checking that one out because that is – I probably – that's probably the game I've been the most excited for all weekend. So I'm excited yeah, to see that. Yeah. You guys will obviously know uh, whether or not it was worth the hype this morning. But, yeah. I, I was really, really surprised that Dan mess. Quinn didn't make your, your your top three coaches. You know. There's been a lot of Dan Quinn buzz. <sighs> Before this weekend, I would have said if they have to go get a retread, Dan Quinn would be the guy. What, and but what, after what, that, did, what did your pop say via our text messaging? <laughs> Hell no. That's <laughs> Please right. God, no. No way. Uh, yeah. And sure enough, Pop is right. Uh, I'm, I'm fully – I said if we well, have look, to get I, a retread. I, I, here's my thing. So, I, you know, I don't want to retread. You know, maybe it's a good way to kind of wrap this up. I don't want to retread of a coach. Um, and Agreed. I think especially one that's was not successful – so I don't want to be the team to give somebody a second chance. No, let's give somebody a first chance. Um, and and so anyway, I mean, it was just a little joke. But by the way, not to get into a deep discussion yeah, no. over Dan Quinn. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, you got to imagine. I mean, that could be a career uh, a career altering day for Dan Quinn if somebody was kind of on the fence about bringing him back, and then this is how he goes out. And you know Jerry's going to clean house. McCarthy's got to be gone. Um, he's probably gone by this morning. You think so? You think so? Bill check the Dallas rumors are, are definitely uh, picking up, and that seems like a you know. I mean, there there is buzz. That there's a lot of interest, and in yeah. I don't. You know, it's one of those uh, double edged swords, right? Like, do you really want to go up against them twice twice a, a year as well? I mean, he's. He's going to be out to prove that he can coach, and I still think he can coach. I just think that New England situation turned out to where it was, you know, it was kind of what ended up happening to Ron here, not comparing Ron in any way to Bill Belichick by, you know, taking on way too much and yeah. let someone else worry about the roster building. But that that seems like an oil and water mix. Uh in Dallas. That'd be fun to watch that implode. Yeah, I just got a hard time believing. I mean, I can see I totally believe that Jerry Jones would be all over bringing in Bill Belichick, but I got a hard time believing Bill Belichick wants to go work for Jerry Jones. But I also think Bill Belichick may have lost his Bill Parcells did it. So. And they're boys. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I also think Belichick's lost his fastball just a bit. I don't want to bet on that. But if my hunch is correct and he goes to Dallas, that whole situation will implode and that'll be great. So <laughs> I'm well, not I mean, you think that, about that, the Dallas roster implode. compared to the new England roster, right? And already oh, have a really good roster. defense with one of the best defensive coaches out there. So could be a little scary. It's interesting. It'll be interesting to see for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's wrap this thing up pop before we get into a full Cowboys breakdown. What do you say? <laughs> It is the All DC right. Sports Plus podcast, right? Yeah, we can't talk anymore about the Cowboys, man. And we won't until next season because they are gone, suckers. All right, without further ado, I'm done. This is Pop. Thanks for having me. Oh.